Good morning all, I am Dr. G. Venila, Assistant Professor of History, SFR College for Women, Sivagasi. The topic today I am going to discuss is Pala Dynasty, that is from history of India up to 2200, 1206 AD. So now let's see, pass on to the title, Pala Dynasty. First we can see about who were the Palas. The Palas uh, were the founders of Pala Empire. Uh, the founder was Gopala. Uh, he probably founded this empire in the year 750 AD. Pala dynasty uh, ruling from 8th to 12th century in India. Uh, that's, uh, their language were Sanskrit, Prakrit, Pali. Pala is a Sanskrit word which means protector. It was added to the name of the emperors giving rise to the name Pala. So this, uh, this word Pala, the meaning was protector and only because of this word uh, they uh, formed this dynasty. The Palas were not supporters of Mahayana Buddhism. Various Mahaviharas, Stupas, Chaityas, temples and forts were built. Only through these uh, evidences we can get uh, proof about, we can get the source of Pala dynasty. Now we can pass on to the rulers of Pala dynasty. The first ruler was Gopala. His period was from 750 to 770 AD. The Pala dynasty was founded by Gopala who also served as the kingdom's first emperor. Uh, he unified Bengal under his control and even brought Magadha under his control. He extended the empire very little and the monastery at uh, Otanpuri, Bihar was founded by Gopala. Uh, he was regarded as the first Buddhist monarch of Bengal after converting to the religion. His reign was marked as a tripartite struggle between Palas, Pratiharas and the Rashtragudas for the control of Kanuj and uh, North India. So they were one among the leading emperors. Next we can pass on to Dharmapala. His reign was from 770 to 810 AD. Dharmapala succeeded Gopala as ruler in around 770 AD. Dharmapala was the second ruler of Pala Empire. He was the son of Gopala. He fought a number of battles against the Pratiharas and Rashtragudas. Dharmapala captured Kanuj and conducted a grand Darbar. Uh, he took the greatest imperial title of the period including Parama Bhattaraka, Parameshwara, Maharaja the Raja. Next, Devapala, his period was from 810 to 850 AD. So, Devapala was the son of Dharmapala and Rana Devi, the princess of Rashtraguda dynasty. Students note down this. Uh, they have matrimonial alliance with Rashtraguda Rastra, dynasty and already we have seen that they have a fight with Rashtraguda. So after this fight they have matrimonial alliance, they have a good link between Rashtragudas and this Palas. Devapala had expanded the empire to eastern India including the kingdom of Assam, Odisha and Kumaruba. He had uh, constructed several monasteries including temples and magadas. So he extend, uh, his extension uh, uh, up to Assam, Odisha and Kamarupa were, was very important and only because of this the empire became extended and became very larger. Devapala carried out raids in the north and Deccan and Peninsula. So he continuously watched the uh, emperors and the and the extend, extended emperors. Next one was Mahibala first. In 988 AD, Mahibala first accented to the throne. When Mahibala first came into power, the Pala kingdom started to flourish once again and reclined the northern and eastern portion of Bengal and Bihar. So this Mahibala was an important ruler among the Palas and because of this Mahibala the empire got a refreshment and extension and a new, uh, the empire got a new energy because of this ruler.
along with his brothers Sridhapala and Vasantapala, Makipala first is thought to have conquered Varanasi also. But even it was not happened, uh, the, Maki, the Pala Empire came to an end. Now we can see the political condition of the Pala Empire. The Pala king gave grant, uh, land grants to Brahmanas, priest and temple. Uh, these grants were permanent and uh, we all know that the Pala kings were religious oriented and so that they gave importance to uh, the Brahmanas and the priest and the temple. Uh, so this land they have granted was permanent, that means they will not get written back the lands. So it was given to the Brahmins completely for their lifetime. They also bestowed land grants to Buddhist monasteries. So the, we, we know that the first ruler Gopala was a snotch Buddhist. So because of his Buddhist love among, against, uh, among the Buddhist Buddhism, uh, the rulers granted, uh, bestowed to the Buddhist monasteries also. The Pala grants are specifically related to maintenance of law and order and the administration of justice. So by this we can understand that they gave more importance to law and order also. So the land grants were also given to uh, Kaivatas and they, uh, that means the peasants. The Palas recorded uh, referred to Rajas, Rajaputras, Ranakas. Uh, Rajankas, Mahasamatas, Mahasamantadipatis, etc. They were probably feudatories who were given land to live of military service. So they gave importance to protection of the country also. There is no evidence for sub feudation under the Palas. So this is a uh, very good policy of the Palas. The royal of officials are maintained in the inscriptions who seem to have administered the kingdom comprising Bengal and Bihar. So some of the titles used for Pala's officials were Maha Dasantika, Maha Krantika, Maha Sandvikarika, etc. The Pala's operated from several loki of power that is Padliputra, uh, Mudragiri, etc., all located on the Ganga. Villages under the Palas were grouped into units of 1 and 10 under the charges of Gramapati and Dasagramika, respectively. They were royal officials responsible for the administration of these units. We have very little epigraphic evidence related to the service of Grand under the Palas. Next, we can pass on to the art and architecture of Palas. During this reign of Palas, art and architecture flourished in the Indian state of Bengal and Bihar. The distinctive growth of Pala dynasty art and architecture revealed the creation of Pala school of cultural art. Many religious aspects of Bengali society might be found in the art and architecture of that time. The art and architecture of the Pala dynasty gave important to terracotta, sculpture and painting. The creation of Dharmapala, the Somapura, Mahavikara and Pukha is one of the finest architecture of the Pala dynasty. <coughs> the great monasteries also known as Somapura, Mahavira was the renowned intellectual hub unit of 12th century. So, Vikramasila Vihara uh, was one important uh, in, um, uh, which was situated uh, near the Ganchetic constructions that are considered to be works uh, of art of Pala and also Otanpuri Vihara and uh, Jagadal Vihara these are also very important Viharas during that period. The prince, priceless masterpiece of Bal, Pala dynasty art and architecture are on display of museum in Bangladesh. Till now we can find that displays. Perfect carving and bronze structures flourished throughout this period. At the advanced level of architectural expansion, various Buddhist vigaras emerged. Terracotta plagues are another important of Pala periods or artistic 
brilliance. These plaques are utilized as wall surface decorations and are recognized as one of the kind work of Bengal artists. These are all about the art and architecture of palace. Thank you for watching the video. Let us meet in another video.